So the other week, I took a look using the zip output stream as a means to incrementally build and then incrementally stream a zip archive to the browser in Lucy CFML. Now, in a conversation that I had on Twitter with James Moberg after this post, we started to talk about generating zip files asynchronously. Now, this in turn got me thinking about Amazon S3 and could I generate a zip file asynchronously and then stream that zip file up to S3. Well, the Amazon S3 API doesn't really have a streaming protocol, but what it does have is something called a multi-part upload workflow, wherein we take a large binary object, split it up into smaller binary chunks, upload those chunks in parallel or in sequence, and then Amazon will take all of those chunks and concatenate them back together to create that large binary. So what I wanna do is use that S3 multi-part workflow to incrementally build a zip archive on S3 using smaller chunks. So to do this, I'm going to take my previous concept of remote image URLs. We're going to pull these image URLs down, write them to a zip archive in series, and then as the size of that zip archive increases, we're going to slice off parts of it and upload them to S3 using a multi-part workflow. So this is the path we're going to use on S3. We're going to initialize our multi-part upload, and that gives us an ID. Each part in the multi-part workflow has to be associated with this ID, and each part has to be numbered appropriately, which is kind of nice because what it means is that the parts don't have to arrive on S3 in order. They can be uploaded in parallel, and as long as they have the correct number, then Amazon S3 can concatenate them back together in the correct order once we finalize. So once we have our multi-part upload, we're going to create a, our binary output stream and our zip output stream. And whereas in my previous demo, I was writing the zip output stream to the cold fusion response, in this case, I'm actually gonna be writing the zip output stream to the binary output stream. And this is key because what this allows us to do is inspect the content of the zip output stream as we're generating the zip. So that once this in memory stream passes a certain size, in this case, once it passes five megabytes, which is the minimum size for each part in a multi-part upload, we can slice off that binary array, push it up to Amazon and continue building our zip archive at the same time. So we're gonna take our image URLs, we're gonna loop over each image, we're gonna download each image in series. So just to keep things a little bit more simple, we're not gonna try and parallelize the downloads, but we are gonna parallelize the uploads. So we're gonna pull down the image. We're gonna create a new zip entry for that image. We're gonna write the zip entry to the zip output stream. So the zip output stream is gonna compress, or in this case, it's just gonna store the image on the fly. Then we're gonna flush that output stream to our byte output stream. So as we're pulling the images down, we're writing them to the zip output stream. The zip output stream is in turn writing to the binary output stream. And after we flush to the binary output stream, to the byte array output stream, what we can do is look to see the size of that byte array. Now, if it's less than the minimum part size, because we have, again, each part in a multi-part upload has to be five megabytes or greater, except for the last part. Uh, if we haven't reached that size, we're just gonna return out of this each which means that we're just gonna move on to the next image. However, if the binary output stream is larger than our minimum size, what we're gonna do is convert the binary output stream, the byte array output stream to a byte array. And then we're going to inside of a future. So this is essentially a Java's version of a promise. Inside of the future, we're going to upload this part and here's the content, right? This is what we just pulled out of the binary output stream. And this is gonna return a future, which we're gonna keep track of for later. And we'll talk about that in a second. And then you see we reset the binary output stream. So once we strip off the byte array that we've built up in memory, we start pushing it to S3 in the background in parallel with everything that's happening right now. And then we reset that binary output stream so that as the zip archive continues to write to the binary output stream, we know that the new bytes will be uh, used in a future part. So once we've iterated over all of our images, we can now flush whatever results we have left to the binary output stream. We can close our zip, we can close our binary output stream. At this point, we probably still have some data 
that has to be used to finalize the zip archive itself. And again, we're just gonna use a future using the run async function here in, in Cold Fusion. We're gonna push that part up to Amazon. And you can see this is the is last part is true in this case, whereas in these ones, it was false. Now, at this point, we have a bunch of these or potentially a bunch of these run asyncs running in parallel. These are the uploads. So while we've been downloading and generating the zip, we're also uploading the parts in the background. But now we have a bunch of these potentially running in the background. No problem. Now all we have to do is take all of these future parts, map over them, call future.get. Now get is now going to block and wait for that future to complete, at which point we'll have that AW response and we can get the E tag because we need the E tags now when we finalize the multi-part E tag, uh, when we finalize the multi-part upload. And then there we go. And at this point, our original path has been stored on Amazon S3 using our multi-part uploads. So let's take a look at, at how this works uh, from a runtime standpoint. You can see I have a bunch of these infos and I'm, I'm just logging a bunch of stuff to the server logs. So if we open up our server logs and we open up our browser here, and let's just kick this off and watch what happens. You can see we're downloading the files, downloading the files, and at some point we have now surpassed, let me just scroll up here, we've hit that five megabyte limit. Let's keep going. We're downloading, we're downloading, we're downloading. Again, we've hit the five megabyte limit. We're uploading a part in the background. Now we're waiting for parts to finish uploading. And there we go. And now the multi-part upload is complete. So you could see that we were downloading the images as we were downloading the image. Let's scroll up here. As we were downloading images, at some point, we hit the minimum size requirement for the part, that five megabytes. In that case, we slice off the byte array into its own content. We start uploading that content to S3 using the multi-part workflow in the background so that we can continue to download images and write them to the archive in parallel. So you can see this is uploading part to S3, and we actually don't finish that part upload. Uploading, uploading here. See, we actually didn't finish completing part one until we had already downloaded a bunch more files. So again, we have that download and that part upload happening in parallel, allowing us to incrementally build that archive and incrementally stream it to S3. And then eventually we have to block and wait for all of our parts to finish. That was that was this part right here where we're calling future.get on all of those background pushes or puts. And then eventually that's done and our multi-part upload is complete. So pretty cool, pretty exciting. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, here's what's so great about Cold Fusion, right? Is that Cold Fusion has this massive amount of functionality out of the box, but then when we need to dip down lower, we can easily dip into the Java layer. And at that point, we're leveraging decades worth of battle-tested functionality. So it's, I mean, it's just amazing the amount of power that we have at our fingertips in Cold Fusion, in Lucy CFML, and thereby also Java under the hood. Just really, really exciting stuff. So uh, anyway, just a very fun exploration.